In 2008, during the big money crash, something cool happened to a guy named Robert Kiyosaki. Banks gave him a huge $300 million, and he didn't have to pay taxes on it. Think of it like playing a money game. Like in Monopoly, or how McDonald's sells burgers, and owns places. Contrary to common belief, McDonald's primary business is not about selling fast food, but real estate. The company owns the land and buildings of most of its franchise locations. People like Bezos use a smart trick, they invest and don't pay lots of taxes. It's legal, but not everyone knows how. The government likes it when people provide houses and jobs, so they give breaks on taxes. The secret is learning how to use loans wisely, like getting money from the bank. If you're smart about it, you can afford more things without owing too much. It's like having an extra boost in the money game. Watch this video to the end, to learn how he did it and how you too can do the same. I'm Darius, and welcome to Personal Finance Insights, where we help you make sense of your money. Remember, our content is for learning only, so talk to a money expert before deciding. If you have not already, subscribe to our channel, for a journey to financial freedom. You may have noticed that some information isn't shared openly. Certain knowledge isn't discussed on mainstream channels like CNBC, BBC or CNN. The school system, for its part, doesn't educate us about a crucial aspect of the financial world, and the nature of money. When you look at what schools typically teach about money, you find that it's often very little, if anything at all. The reality is not an oversight, it's a deliberate omission. The aim is to keep the majority of people, especially those in the middle and lower classes, working hard without understanding what the rich know. Reflecting on your childhood, think of a time when you had a conversation about money in your family. For most of us the discussions about money never happened. Without guidance from role models, money felt unfamiliar and will continue to be if you don't learn how money works. Trying to understand earning, saving, and investing, showed these topics were missing in our daily conversations. It is clear that most of our parents, didn't know much about money, reflecting a trend of avoiding money talks in society. This realization, shapes your financial challenges, showing the importance of talking about money early on. Your experience highlights the need to speak openly about money, making sure future generations, know how to make smart financial choices. If you come across material like Rich Dad Poor Dad from 1997, you'll see it attempts to bridge this gap, revealing what the rich teach their kids about money, something that is not shared with the majority. Living in poverty is a challenge, and it's disheartening that our educational system is also flawed. We acknowledge corruption in banking and politics, but there's a similar issue in academia. We entrust our children to schools, expecting them to provide essential knowledge, yet they often fail to impart fundamental financial education. What is financial education, then? It's not merely about getting a job, working hard, saving money, and investing conventionally. The financial industry is intertwined with debt and taxes. Since 1971, when the US detached the dollar from the gold standard, the dollar became debt. Yet, the traditional advice persists, go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt. Questioning this narrative is crucial. Why save money when it can be printed endlessly? The rich don't work for money, they don't accumulate it conventionally. They understand the subtleties of wealth building. Saving money won't make you rich, challenging a notion ingrained in many of us since childhood. True financial education goes beyond conventional wisdom. It discourages blind adherence to a system, that urges people to save and work hard, without understanding the in-depth knowledge of money creation. The powerful message is to break free from the mentality of working for money, and instead learn how money works to achieve financial success. The conventional mindset of receiving a paycheck, often leads to a passive, employee-like mindset, hindering the path to financial independence. Understanding assets and liabilities is vital. Many mistakenly consider their home an asset. When, in reality, it can be a liability. Understanding the distinction between a noun, like a house, 
considered an asset, and a verb, such as cash flow, is essential for determining whether a particular aspect positively or negatively impacts your financial well-being. If money is leaving your pocket, it's a problem. When money is coming in, do you feel the burn? Some financially smart people own many rental properties, and they have money coming in every month. But some people have big houses, and money is flowing out. That's not good, it can lead to financial problems. It's about mindset. The poor miss that taxes are a major expense. Strangely, we often overlook it. Check your paycheck, it might not add up, and the government is dipping into your pocket. But are you doing anything to minimize that? Rich people and those with fewer resources think about money differently. Most people work for their money, but wealthy folks know that taxes are a big deal. There are three types of income, money you earn by working, money from investments like stocks, that is, portfolio income, and money that comes in without you actively working, that is passive income. What makes the rich stand out is that, they depend a lot on passive income, and the cool thing is, it doesn't get taxed much. This smart way of handling money helps them accumulate wealth, without dealing with lots of taxes. Lots of people grumble about taxes, but they don't know how different kinds of money work. Here's the deal, rich folks don't work regular jobs, they own things that make them money, like houses or businesses. The thing is, many folks don't know much about handling money. Believe it or not, if you're smart about it, you could make a million bucks and not pay too much on taxes. It's like a secret skill, knowing the rules about money, can help you keep more of it in your pocket. For example, imagine you make money by owning a bunch of rental properties. If you manage it right, you might not have to pay much in taxes on all that rental income. It's not about making less money, it's about understanding the money game, and using the rules to your advantage. Rich people do this a lot, and it's why they end up with so much more money in the bank. Imagine playing Monopoly, where you build those green houses, and then upgrade to a red hotel, to make more money. It's a bit like what big companies do, like McDonald's. They sell burgers, but guess what? They're also smart, they invest in real estate to avoid paying too much in taxes. Take a look at Jeff Bezos, the guy behind Amazon. He made loads of money, but here's the trick, he didn't end up paying a ton in taxes. Now. It's not sneaky, it's legal. The thing is, not many folks know these money tricks. It's like having a secret manual, and the key is getting a good education about money. Using debt as money. Sounds strange, right? But it means borrowing money smartly. Let's say the bank lends you some cash. If you use it wisely, you can afford things you thought were too expensive, it's like having a money tool that not everyone knows how to use. Learning these tricks can help you, make your money work for you, just like the big players do. When the big money crash happened in 2008, something interesting happened to Robert Kiyosaki. Banks handed him a whopping $300 million without making him pay taxes on it. Now, regular folks often find it hard to get loans, especially if their credit scores aren't great. Schools usually don't teach much about smart money moves, so many people miss out on learning financial strategies. Without knowing much about how money works, it's tricky to figure out if something, like a house or a car, is making your money situation better or worse. The key is looking at which way the money is going, is it coming in or going out? It's like having a clear picture of how things impact your wallet. Understanding this helps you make smarter choices about what you spend on, and what brings more money in, so you can keep your wallet happy. If a house brings money into your pocket, it's like a helper, so it's called an asset. But if it's taking money away, then it's like a money drainer, and that's a liability. The government likes it when people provide houses and jobs, so they give breaks on taxes. Understanding how money works, which is financial education, can help anyone do this smart money stuff. So, it's like having a guide to making good choices with money, especially when it comes to houses and jobs. Understanding the tax code can make us more prosperous. Poverty might be a mindset passed down, but changing the dialogue in your head, from I can't afford it to how can I afford it? 
can lead to a better future. Mistakes are part of the learning process. Learning about real estate can teach you how to become wealthy, without having to put a lot of money down at the start. It's like getting a guide, that shows you clever ways to make money with properties. You don't need to have loads of cash up front, it's about knowing smart moves in the real estate world. So, when you understand these tricks, you can build up wealth, without needing a ton of money right from the beginning. Words become reality, and intelligence grows through mistakes. Everyone faces low points, but they can be turning points if you get the message. Fear of failure traps many, but learning from mistakes is the key. Until next time, I am Darius, stay financially aware.